So God calls you to be holy. The word holy in Hebrew means to be set apart. And most of the time, what it is, is we conform to this world and what the world deems as love or what the world deems as relationship things, or we pervert the things of God to comfort people in their sin or to enable in them in their sin. And God deems love as something that's totally different. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, he says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. And again, it rejoices with the truth, but it does not delight in evil. So if I condone sin, do I love that person? If I see a person driving off of a cliff and I know the outcome of them driving off that cliff is going to be death then out of my love for them, what I would do is I would warn them of the signs to come. So in our life in Christ, why do we not do the same thing? Why do we not warn those who are around us of the life to come if they continue to stray away from Jesus? If they continue to drive themselves off that cliff, cliff spiritually. I know the trouble that's going to come. Yet what I've done is I've, I've put Jesus' teachings on the back burner. I put the word of God on the back burner. I told the Holy Spirit, you know what, not right now. I won't, I won't speak on this. Why is it? He says it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. Most important message that I have for somebody who's watching this today is in this area of your life, is there someone in your life who you are enabling or condoning a life of sin? And I'm not telling you to condemn them to hell. I'm not telling you that they don't deserve God's love or that it's not hard or it's not challenging. But God, first of all, called you to be set apart. He gave you a new life in him. And what you do, you continue to plant the seeds and you expect for God to water them. So what you do is you warn them of the troubles to come and the blood will be off of your hands because you told them of the trouble that's going to come. If they drive off that cliff spiritually another verse that i want you to remember and to hold in your heart is galatians 2 20. it says i have been crucified with christ and i no longer live but christ who lives in me the life i now live in the body i live by faith in the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me that's the perfect display of love as he gave himself for you so that you and i can have life in him so if there's someone around you and you continue to hold on to the fact that I don't want to hurt their feelings or I don't want to rub them the wrong way. One thing I would want to tell you is, look, continue to pray for that person. Continue that, that what that what happens is that when you give them the gospel, you give them the hope that is found in Jesus Christ, that they receive it. But don't enable them in their sin. Don't comfort them in their sin and think that that's love. Because you know the outcome. You know the end of that story and where it leads to. If they do not accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, then they won't make the cut. So I pray this message encourages you and may God bless you.